kingdom. We talked about the middle kingdom. It is time to get to the new kingdom. Now, we remember yesterday, we talked about the new kingdom starting after the Hyksos were driven out. We had Prince Amos of the Egyptians. He goes, he's from Thebes, and he winds up getting the Egyptians to use the Hyksos weapons against them because the Hyksos, they had those things. They had the horse chariots. They had the powerful weapons. And the Egyptians used them against their captors and took over. And so what's kind of cool is so the, the new kingdom, much like how the middle kingdom compared to the old kingdom, it ends up being larger and richer than Egypt of the past. Uh, we're going to see that the Egyptians are going to not only have a tremendous amount of territory outside of the Nile River that they're going to control, they're going to go control all of Kush, which we'll talk about next week. They're going to go rule the Sinai Peninsula. They're going to also even rule all the way up present day Israel, Palestine, and to where Turkey is, southern Turkey. So this is a huge amount of land that they're going to control. And when they control more land, they're going to have more stuff, more resources. Now, Pharaoh Avery, who we had to mummify earlier in our song today, he didn't just go and spend the stuff on getting crowns for him or building pyramids, though. Pharaoh Avery wound up going and bringing it back to the kingdom, having a golden age of building and monuments. We're going to see some amazing architecture being created, things like obelisks. Um, how many people know what the Washington Monument is? The big tower, Washington Monument? Yeah. Uh, guess what? That's an Egyptian style obelisk. If I can spell it correctly, there we go. So obelisks right here. Egyptians built a ton of these during the New Kingdom. And that's just like our Washington Monument. Uh, and it's the same idea. We, we took that idea. In fact, there's the Washington Monument. There's some Egyptian obelisks. It's pretty cool. Also, if you go to France, they're all over France because the, uh, the French really thought the obelisks were cool, which is kind of crazy that all these Egyptian things... But some other cool things are going to happen during the New Kingdom. Now, we're going to talk about this a little bit more later, but there is going to be a man named Akhenaten. And he is going to say, you know what? Let's get rid of all of those gods. Ra, Amun-Ra, you know, uh, Horus, Seth, and let's just worship one god. So he actually makes Egypt monotheistic for a short period of time. He is going to go say, no, there's only one guy, Aten, that we should worship. And here we see uh, this right here. And it's the sun god. Uh, and Akhenaten actually means like beloved of Aten or something like that. And here's the thing, though. Egyptian culture for the last, you know, 2,000 years had been focused on polytheism. All of these gods. All of those priests were very, very powerful. And now Akhenaten is saying, well, guess what? All you priests, your jobs are gone. You don't have a job anymore because the gods you worship aren't real. So the priests naturally do not like him. So what do you think is going to happen to poor Akhenaten here? What do you think, Danielle? He's going to get, like, attacked. Yeah, they're going to kill him, in fact. Not just attacked. They're going to kill him. The priests are going to have Akhenaten assassinated. And I was actually just talking to Austin about this beforehand. And then his son is going to take power at the ripe old age of 10 years old. That's right. Same age as some of you all, 10 years old, he is going to take power. Now, you probably know him as King Tut. His name was Tukanaten, and then got changed to Tutankhamun after the priests convinced him to go and change it back to polytheism. Because, you know, he's just a 10-year-old boy, and all the advisors say, you know, everyone was really mad at your dad and the gods were really unhappy at your dad. That's why your God, dad died, because he made the gods unhappy. He tried to deny the gods power. So you should bring back the old ways. And, you know, if a bunch of advisors were telling you guys that you made all the gods unhappy and everyone, all the people were unhappy in Egypt, you probably would switch it back too. So King Tut is really famous for going and making Egypt polytheistic again. Because King Tut didn't do much else because we only know about King Tut because his tomb got robbed by modern people as opposed to ancient people like all the other ones. Speaking of tomb robbing, we know that Pharaoh Avery did not get buried in a pyramid because we know that the pyramids were giant rob me signs. So he had his remains put in the Valley of Kings. And of course, his queen was buried in the Valley of Queens, where we have all of the new kingdom tombs being done. 
And we'll see some pictures of the Valley of Kings, Valley of Queens tomorrow uh, when we're looking at Hapsuchet in a little bit more detail. But um, with this, here's part of the problem. It does not solve the problem of looting because Avery's uh, chief architect, Aiden, Kalen bribes Aiden a hundred bucks and then Aiden tells Kalen where the tomb is. And then Aiden even tells Kalen where all the traps are. So then Kalen gets Danielle and Lance and Alicia and Caleb to go break into the tomb and rob Pharaoh Avery's tomb, even though it was supposed to be hidden away. So unfortunately, our Egyptian pharaohs still cannot win. They were still robbed in the afterlife. Bummer. And finally, our new kingdom is going to end because of, once again, a series of invasions. It's not one group like the Hyksos ending the Middle Kingdom. It's going to be a whole bunch of people. They call, they call them the Sea Peoples. And we don't know where exactly the Sea Peoples are from. Um, we think islands like Crete, Cyprus, and other Mediterranean islands. And this was more, instead of just one big, hey, divine's coming in and conquering, um, just a series of groups of people looking for a new home and coming and finding Egypt as that place and attacking. Then we're gonna have groups like the Libyans coming more Bedouin tribes attacking. So we're going to see that um, the new kingdom will fall. Um, so that is our new kingdom of Egypt, our notes for the day, easy peasy, short, lemon squeezy. Do we have any questions? I'm stopping the